Welcome to Speaking of Grace, the weekly message podcast from the Whole Life Church in Orlando, Florida. We're a multi-ethnic, multicultural, and multi-generational congregation committed to our mission of loving people into a lifelong friendship with God. We are committed to our vision of being a church without walls, fully engaged in serving the people of our community. Thank you for joining us as we continue Speaking of Grace. All right. Hey there, family. Oh, good. How are you all doing? How's everybody doing at home? Yeah, you're doing great, right? I mean, you're probably sitting there with, you know, your warm beverage and a croissant. I'm starting to feel hungry. But we're glad you're a part of the family. Whether you're, you're sitting right here or whether you're sitting at home, you're a part of the whole life family, your whole lifer. And we're so glad you're a part of that. So thank you so much for joining us today. And I got to tell you, um, I'm looking for a new friend. Anybody want to be my friend? I need a new friend. Anybody willing to be, be my friend? I've got some hands. Keep your hands up. If you're willing to be my friend, I just need to know. I, okay, okay, now. <laughs> now keep your hands up because this is where you're going to find. If you're willing to be my friend, I'm going to call one of you to come up that has your hand up, okay? So if somebody's willing to be my new need a new friend, if you're willing to be my new friend and you're willing to come up front of all these people and take your chances on what I might be doing to you, wow, I suddenly have a lot less people interested in being friends with me. What's that all about? What about you at home? If you can get on down here really quick, we'd be happy to go ahead and get you up here. Okay. All right. So, uh, oh, all all the hands are down now. Now, wait a minute. Somebody was willing, right? So... Yeah, you want to, okay, here we go. All right. Um, you're going to get handed a microphone because we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit and we want everybody to be able to hear you. So, hi. Hello. My name is Ken. I'm Rachel. Rachel, what a pleasure to meet you, Rachel. Thank you so much. You sit behind me most weeks when we're when worshiping. It's, it's great to have you. And we, we haven't really gotten to know each other yet. So, thank you for being brave. All these other people... They didn't think friendship with me was worth coming up here. <laughs> but you, I can tell you're going to be a really good friend. So let's walk right over here because I've got something that I'd like to get to know you. I mean, you get to listen to my stories every week, right? So you already pretty much know who I am. But I'm going to have you take a seat right here. Okay. And we have a really uh, nice uh, uh, we'll have a nice little uh, app here that we're going to have you work in. We have a little stylus for you. I'm going to hang on to it okay. for just – it's okay. I'm going to hang on for just a second. And so I just want to kind of show you how it works. Um, you get to pick between colors. It's kind of exciting. So you could go with a black marker or a blue par- marker or red or green. Okay. I'm just letting you know that because it, it's not really has nothing to do with, but I just, I think it's exciting. <laughs> and so what I want you to do is I'm going to want you to write down the things I need to know to be your friend. So things about yourself, things that would make me be able to be a good friend to you you know, the things that are important to you, just whatever I need to know to be your friend. So, you know, like I, you know, for me, I'm, uh, um, I'm left-handed. Um, so I might write that down. And then, um, I used to have, my hair used to be a lot more red than it is now, you know, stuff like that. And so you just write down whatever you want. Now, I need you to be able to concentrate, and I'm going to actually be doing something else while you're doing this because I need to give you some time, and I just want you to, I want you to write everything you can think down in the amount of time that I'm giving you. So I have some noise-canceling headphones there. I'm going to ask you to go ahead, and I can actually take that for right now. We'll put that right here. And so we're going to have you put those noise-canceling headphones on. Now, after you get those on, I'm going to give you the stylus, and you can get busy. Okay. All right. So while she's doing that, we're going to go ahead and uh, do something else. We're going to go ahead and watch a video. So the Bible is one of the most influential books of all time, but what is it exactly? Yeah, some people treat the Bible like a divine behavior manual that dropped out of heaven. Others use it like a theology dictionary written to answer all of our questions about God. And others still think of it like a grab bag of spiritual one-liners and inspiring stories. But here's the thing. The Bible isn't written as a rule book or theology dictionary or even as a collection of inspirational writings. Then what is the Bible? Well, open up the Bible to page one and read the opening words. In the beginning. Now, turn to the last chapter of the Bible where you can read this. And they reigned forever and ever. 
Okay, so the Bible's telling a story from beginning to end. Yeah, it's one epic narrative about how God has appointed humanity as his partners to oversee this amazing world. It's about how we've ruined that partnership and how God is restoring us and our world through Jesus. Okay, one story, but there's a lot going on. Many plots, many characters, all written in many different books. But once you see how every book has a careful literary design, you won't get lost. And you can see how it fits into the overall storyline. There are also important repeated themes that weave through the entire biblical story. Yeah, like the covenants that God makes with people. Or the hope for a human who will confront evil. Or how God's justice will one day make all things right. And every theme culminates in the story of Jesus. There are also a lot of strange words in the Bible, words we don't use in normal language. But when we take time to understand them, we discover profound ideas that contribute to the overall biblical story. So it takes work to know how to read the different types of literature in the Bible. But once you do learn how, you'll discover that the Bible is a work of literary genius that can transform how you live and how you think about everything. So that's what the Bible Project is all about, to help people see the Bible as one unified story that leads to Jesus. We're a nonprofit animation studio that makes videos and resources. And it's all free to use because of a large group of generous people who've come together to contribute to this project. You can find everything that we're up to at thebibleproject.com. So today as we're talking about the Bible, I wanted to kind of make you aware of some resources for understanding your Bible. And the Bible project is a favorite of mine. Um, Tammy said, now, do you want the last part trimmed off where they're kind of talking about, you know, kind of telling you to do that? No, that's what I want you to see. I want you to go there and check them out. They're fantastic. And here's some other resources for you. If you, uh, if you're, you're kind of worried, you know, how am I going to remember these? They're, they're on the back of the sheets that you would have received when you came in. And we're also going to post those on social media. But if you don't trust us to do that, you're welcome to take your phone out, take a picture of the screen if you'd like. These are fantastic resources. BibleGateway.com has just about every version of the Bible you can think of. And so one of my favorite things when I look at Bible verses is to see how different versions of the Bible translate it, because there's a lot of different ways to take that original language and look at it. And so it gives me a great tool for doing that. Now, Bible Hub is also another amazing resource. Blue Letter Bible, one of the things I like about that one is that you can actually click on the words, the the words that are being used, and it will show you the original word in the original language, and then it will show you the definition, all the different ways that word can be defined. And so that's a really cool tool. Um, After that, you see the Bible project that I was talking about. YouVersion is a great app to have on your phone. They have a lot of different Bible um, studies that you can do. They're fantastic. And then also one of my favorites is the AdventistBiblicalResearch.org. And that's where Adventist uh, theologians post their opinions on different p- uh, pieces of Scripture, different theological positions that the Seventh-day Adventist Church takes. And so I get a lot of great information from there as well. So as we got started talking about the Bible, I thought I'd lay out those resources, and I also just want to take up a little time so that we could, you know, find out more here. So I think we're ready to go. All right. Are you, are you, did you, did you get everything written out? I don't even see your name on there, though. Isn't that important for me to be here? I just, okay. Okay, cool. There we go. So it's there. Uh, let's, let's put it up on the screen. There we go. All right. So Let's have you stand up because it just makes me feel weird to have you sitting there and me towering over you. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and keep our bodies so that the audience can kind of see us, but then we're going to turn our heads so we can kind of look back up here at the screen. We're going to kind of do that, all right? And so the, the first thing, Rachel, that you wrote down is that, um, that love is important to you. Except, Oh, I see a theme going here. Um, <laughs> acceptance, friendship. Happiness, laughter, musicals, yes. Disney, yes. and quality time, family, and food. So what you're saying, what I'm, what I'm reading into all of this is that um, to be your friend, I'm probably going to need to make you a meal once a week. Is that, <laughs> is that correct? Is that At least every once in a while. Every um, once in a while. Okay. That's where the quality time comes in. It's cooking. How much, how much is really quality time though, right? <laughs> you know, a couple minutes a week, something like that, you know? I mean... How much is quality time, really? How much is quality time? I think... You know what? I'll, okay. I'll figure that out on my own. <laughs> don't, you don't need to answer that. I'll just I'll figure that one out on my own. I'll, I'll give you what I think is reasonable okay. um, because that's the way I'm going to roll on this one. 
Um, happiness, laughter, Disney, like all of Disney or just like old Disney, new Disney, all Disney, all of them, all of them, all the all of them. okay, because I'm more of a classic Disney kind of person, more of an old, I mean, a, an old, a classic kind of yeah. Disney rather than a new Disney kind of yeah. person. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay, all cool. Disney okay. is acceptable. Okay. So I feel like, like right now, I know just about everything about you that I need to know. Okay. And, um, and we're, we're friends. Yeah. Right, Rachel? Yeah. So, um, so the thing is that the, um, this month I was a little short on the bills. So can I have $1,000? We're friends. And uh, I just, I think that it would not, you know, friends do things for friends. So, yeah. you know, $1,000 maybe. I cough it up. You cough, you cough it up I'd for help me. Out. Yeah. Oh, you're a great friend. Like, is your purse down there right now? Because yeah, I got credit I could, cards. Where's like, my Costco card? I mean, I'm not paying any bills on. <laughs> I don't, I'm not paying any bills on Sabbath. I just want to you get out of here before, you know. So you you do that. Yeah. You're a sweet person, but does, does it make you feel a little like our friendship? That I had some ulterior motives for our friendship. I don't think so. Oh. Because I know you're you're nice. Oh, look at that. That's very optimistic of you. That's very optimistic. I love that about you, though. Thank you so much for helping me out, Rachel. I really appreciate it. Give Rachel a hand for being brave, and you can go ahead and hand off the microphone. Thank you so much. You know, sometimes I think that when we read the Bible, we kind of do it the way that I went about having this interaction with Rachel. We go into it because we want to get something out of it other than just a friendship. Every time I hear a sermon on the Bible, there is a text that's inevitably used. It's this text. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It connects, uh, corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Great verse. Believe in this verse. Think it's an important verse. But sometimes I feel like when we, when we look at that verse, it feels a little bit to me like we go about that verse in a checklist style. Well, hey, this is what the Bible is for. So I'm going to make sure I check, 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 check these boxes. Because, you know, it, it's good for for this. So let's, let's look at that again. Scripture is inspired by God. It's useful to teach us what is true. So let's, let's figure out what's true. Let's figure out what's wrong in our, but, oh, did you notice what's wrong in our lives? Did you notice it didn't say everyone else's lives? I'm just saying. Uh, anyway, it corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us what is right. And so we, we look at this checklist, okay? And then, uh, and God uses it to prepare and equip his people. What I often don't see is the verse that actually comes right before these verses. This is the verse that comes right before. 2 Timothy 3 verse 15 says, you have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood. Paul's talking to Timothy. And they have given you the wisdom to receive, following along, the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. I don't like using those first two verses without using this verse, because what the whole point of this is, is salvation that comes by trusting in Jesus. What are we being saved from? Ourselves. I like that. Some people will say sin. I'd like to tell you that we're being saved from a broken relationship with God. You know, in Genesis, we find that humanity ruptures its friendship with God. You basically say, God, your friendship isn't as important as me. And what God comes to do is is to save us, not simply from our sins, but sins are what block us in our relationship with God. They're what get in between us. It's like when I'm, you know, if I'm having a relationship with you and I'm constantly doing some stuff to push you away, and that's what sin does. And so when we are being saved, what are we being saved from? We're being saved from the distance between God and we're being saved into a friendship with God, an unruptured friendship with God. And so when you look at that, we, 
again, will often go ahead and make it about heaven. I'm going to be saved. I'm not going to die. Not going to go to hell. And we forget about the friendship. We're like, it's like me with Rachel being more concerned about whether she can cough up a thousand dollars to help me meet my bills than the fact that I've got this amazing person that wants to be my friend. I'm more worried about what she can do for me than who she is and what she has to offer in that friendship. You know, Jesus encountered um, this issue very much when he was here on earth. Jesus was talking to a bunch of Sadducees who were trying to trap him. They're like, hey, Jesus, there are these seven brothers who had a wife, or the first one had a wife, and he died, and then it goes all through the line. She was married to all of them. So in, in the resurrection, who's she going to be married to? They're interested about the details. They were interested about the minutia. They were interested in the trivia. They were interested in using Scripture to trap. They were interested in using Scripture as a, as a battering ram to make their point, to discredit one person by their superior knowledge. But Jesus says back to them, your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. You have to know who he was talking to. We sometimes think of like the Pharisees are like the conservatives in our time. The Sadducees are like the, the you know, liberals, progressives, whatever you want to call them in our time. We kind of look at them that way. And it's not too far off, but what is in common is just like there are conservative Christians who know the Bible very well. There are progressive Christians who know the Bible very, very well. And in Jesus' time, the Sadducees, it wasn't like they didn't know the scriptures. These people had the whole Old Testament memorized. 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 The whole Old Testament. Memorized. And Jesus says, you don't know the scriptures. (laughs) What? The other thing that uh, Sadducees majored in, they had PhDs in power. They were all about power. That was their thing. And Jesus says, the thing that you think is your strength, you don't even know it. You think you've got a PhD in it, and maybe you do. You're a kindergartner. You're a kindergartner. You don't understand the scriptures, and you don't know the power of God. Why? I suggest to you because they had not approached the scriptures correctly. And they had also not understood what the power of God is about. The power of God isn't about earthly blessings of of being able to throw your weight around over here or receive this from God over there. The power of God is the restoration of relationship with each other and with him. Jesus has another combat, uh, combative uh, experience that we, was our, our verse for this morning. John chapter 5, verses uh, 39 uh, and 40. You search the scriptures. He's talking to Pharisees now because you think they give you eternal life. But the scriptures point to me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Isn't it sad that we would study the Bible and never find the main point of it? That when we read it, we would be all about trying to criticize other people. We'd be all about trying to change other people. And we'd never go to the person who can change us. That we'd never go to the giver of the Bible and say, tell me about you. See, Jesus wants to do for you what he did for his disciples right after his resurrection. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture. I want to suggest to you, you can be the smartest person on earth. And if you go to the Bible and think that you're just going to understand it on your own, you are missing out. Whenever you open that Bible, you need to say, Jesus, open my mind to what you want to tell me today. Open my mind so I can understand. Help me know what it is that you want to do in my life today. Family, our mission is loving people into a lifelong friendship with God. And there is no better piece of literature than the Bible for that. 
The Bible has everything that we need in it to help us to know how to have a relationship with God. It corrects us. It tells us about God. It tells us everything. It tells us about that relationship with God. And if we're going to love people into a lifelong relationship with God, the first thing we have to do is have that word in our own life that's slowly transforming us to be like Jesus. You see, when we talk about the Bible, look at all those other values that we have. Look at them. Each one of them is informed by God's word. How do we know what love is? The Bible tells us. How do we know what grace looks like? The Bible tells us. The prodigal son that we talked about last week. How do we know what forgiveness is? The Bible tells us. How do we know what acceptance looks like? The Bible tells us. How do we know how to worship? The Bible tells us. How do we know what participation looks like? The Bible tells us. And you're thinking, wait a minute. It doesn't exactly, there's not like, it doesn't. The Bible is full of principles that we take and we apply and we say, this is what it means to live in relationship with God. So what you can do is you can decide for yourself. Do you want to take this Bible And do you want it to look like the owner's manual to a car? Or would you rather have it look like a love letter? That is two weeks in a row with an original song. That was awesome. That was an original song by Kyla. Let's give her another round of applause. Right, so Richard, two two weeks original songs, yeah. a third one next week, or well, you know that that is Pastor Ken's daughter, and I'm sorry, a, a button popped off your chest there, Pastor yep. Ken, is a <laughs> just beaming there, a job no well doubt. done, yeah, great job. So actually, next week um, we're excited to have Albert taking us with uh, a cappella week, so just the voices, and it's worship the topic next week. Worship is the worship topic. is the topic, and so I'll just plug this that. The reason, one of the reasons why we're going with acapella is because the voice is the purest form of worship. So I, I say that as an instrumentalist, uh, but <laughs> it's just going to be the voices. So come prepared to sing next week. Awesome. Love it. So now is your time to send in your questions. Um, I'm watching the chat rooms on both the church website as well as Facebook. So those of you that are in-house, you have that immediate response. Uh, those of you that are watching online, it's like a three-minute delay. So I'm getting some in. But to give all those folks online, the song is just about ending right now uh, for those watching online. So I'll I'll toss it over to Richard to ask the first question. All right. Pastor Cam, would you like a softball or would you like a curveball? Come on. What are you best at throwing? Well, you know, if we want to look back at the 16th century in Erasmus and the Textus Receptus. No, we won't start there. So, Pastor Cam. I was ready for that one. I know you were. I know you're ready to go deep. But uh, how about... As we talked about, the sermon started today, and I love that. The story of the Bible actually was the, the, um, the video that we watched, right? right? It's one, one cohesive story. Correct. We see beginning to end, and that story, as I understand it, is the story of, it's God's story of redemption to us. It's really not, even though we're, there's a lot of us in it, it's really God's story about us. My question to you is that if that's the, the story, why do we continually make it so much about the things that we're doing instead about God's story of redemption? Ah, boy, because I think we tend to boil everything down to ourselves usually anyway, right? It's always about me (laughs) instead of it's about you. Nice job, Kyle. Um, So it is. It's about God, and and we tend to want to make it about ourselves. And when we start making it about ourselves, the easiest way for us to go ahead and approach the Bible is as a checklist. If it's going to be about me, just let me check the boxes and do what I need to do to get what I want to get. Um, You know, kind of like when I was talking to Rachel. Well, what, you know, okay, so if I do this, this, and this, then I can get $1,000 for you because we're friends. It's not a very fulfilling friendship. um, And much like Rachel, I thought Rachel did a great job of actually probably portraying something I hadn't expected her to, which is the grace of God that sees through our greediness and is and loves us in spite of it. Oh boy. All right. We are getting a lot of questions in and uh, some of them are tough. Um, <laughs> stay so, away from those. Stay away from those. Okay. Um, 
This one's this one probably I think about myself, so I'll ask it. It's from Trafina, and it is how do we get rid of doubts that the Bible isn't true? Because sometimes there uh, you can wonder it was written so long ago. How how can we how can we have that faith that it's true? You know, I think that I think that there's always room to not believe. If it, and it's one of those things you've got to decide where the evidence weighs out for you. Um, there's the evidence, um, and then there's what you see God doing in your own life. Um, and when I logic things out, for me, the logical thing is that there is a God. It doesn't, for me, it doesn't make sense that everything that is just somehow came out of nothing. Even science tells us that something always has to have something to create it. So that's the first thing that I would say. And then the second thing to me is that if there is a God, I love that he, that he would care about me enough to want to interact with me. Mm-hmm. And the Bible to me, when you look at, there's all kinds of, and I could get into, there's all kinds of way to historically verify a lot of the portions of the Bible. There's some parts that we can't. But there's a lot of things that we can that we can historically verify, and Jesus Christ is actually one of them. Jesus is actually one of the most easily verified historical figures out there. Um, and when you start looking at all the evidence, for me, it really um, it really adds up that the Bible is true. But what I would say is that sometimes we discourage people from looking and just just accept it, just have faith, just believe. Mm-hmm. And I think that can be deeply dissatisfying to the more analytical among us. And so my my thing is that if it's true, the evidence will be there. And if you're looking for God, Jesus, God says through Jesus that if you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. And I do believe that if you're looking for the evidence, God will bring it up there for you. Excellent. Yeah, it, uh, Steps to, not some great, I'm sorry, uh, Case for Christ. Yeah. It's also a great book about, has a lot of evidence. Of for those just, who don't like reading books, there's a movie, there's oh, a documentary, yes. all kinds of good <laughs> stuff there. Yeah, there's some awesome. fantastic books out there on this topic. Excellent. Um, another question coming in is uh, from Lynn. What's the best way to solve a situation where two people interpret the words or the scripture differently? Uh, to move on. <laughs> but uh, what if it becomes a point of contention in the relationship where uh, there's many denominations now because of uh, scripture interpretation? What do we, how do we solve something like that? Is it possible? Well, apparently all the denominations moved on. No, um, <laughs> no I, and I know that's, I don't want to be seen. This is a really important question because a lot of us do interpret the Bible different ways, and there's a lot of different ways to interpret different passages. The first thing I would, I would not get hung up on is being right. If the Bible is about a relationship with God, the question is, is what that, when that other person's interpreting it incorrectly, is it stopping them from having their relationship with God? If it is, then you can gently explain why you see it that way and then move on. Um, you just, I have not encountered a whole, I've, I can't think of any arguments that I've ever won theologically. I remember I was doing Bible studies with somebody about why Sabbath mattered. I went through every argument. This person was like, no, 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 no. And this was going, you know, and, and, and we were in a prayer meeting together a couple months later, and this dear elderly woman in the prayer meeting said some comment about the Sabbath and the lady next to me who had done these Bible studies punched me. She said, why don't you explain it like that? (laughs) And I had, but God helps us hear what he needs us to hear when he needs us to hear it in the way that he wants us to hear it. And so that's one of the things that I would just say is like, it's not about winning an argument, right? It's about people encountering Jesus and having relationship with him. That's what theology is supposed to be for. Excellent. I think we only have time for one more question from the internet. I'm having a hard time deciding, which is good because then we can ask those questions during the podcast. So if we didn't answer your question today, check us out uh, on Wednesday morning. The podcast comes out called This Is Whole Life. 
Uh, I'm going to go with someone's children. So because they're minors, I won't say their names. But their question is, the Bible is filled with love letters, however, filled with wars and death and even a good angel of death. Um, and do we have a God of war? Is that the picture the Bible paints? And uh, that's the question from someone's children. Do we have a God of war? Is God a God of war? God is a God of a lot of things. Um, you know, all of us, I think most of us in, in this room would be pretty proud that the United States participated in the Second World War and went to war to ensure freedom and liberty and to stop genocide. I think we'd be pretty proud of that. And it's a last resort, but when you love somebody, you sometimes go to war for them. Um, and what we see in the Bible is, is God is a God of war at times. He goes to war on behalf of, of his kids and to stop um, horrible things from happening. And so it can be confusing. Sometimes we'll look at it and we'll think, well, this isn't a very good God. But my encouragement is to dig a little deeper and look for the love in what's happening. And sometimes it's hard to find. I'm not going to, I'm not, you know, I'm, let's just be honest. It can be a little hard to, to understand. Um, but a lot of times the things that we think sometimes we, we attribute to God are people who are mistakenly doing things um, and we think, oh, well, the Bible condones that. And the Bible is sometimes making exactly the opposite point. Look at, look at these people doing terrible things. My favorite book of the Bible, Judges. You see people doing horrendous things in that book. And that wasn't God's sanction. That was, that was them. And it was the point is that they weren't connected to God. And they weren't listening to him. It, the, the book of Judges says repeatedly, every man did what was right in his own eyes. And that book is pointing out that when we do what was right in our own eyes, we think we're so smart, but we wind up doing horrendous things. And so, um, and so that's what I would just say is that it, the Bible... Um, God is a God of a lot of things. Um, as as uh, C.S. Lewis said about Aslan, who is his stand-in for Jesus, um, is the lion safe? is not a tame lion. God is not tame, and he can't be boxed up. I think it was also, is he safe? And then we're like, no. no. Is he good? Yes. yes. So I, lo- I love uh, language and wardrobe in the, that series. Well, thank you so much, Ken. I think that was a fantastic answer. I had, I was, wasn't expecting it, honestly. So thank you so much. And again, check us out on the podcast during the week, wherever podcasts are heard and listened to. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Randy McGray, podcast producer and host here at Whole Life Church. Loving people into a lifelong friendship with God is our mission at the Whole Life Church and our podcasts, Speaking of Grace and its companion, 15 with Andy, Randy, and Jeff, are designed to help facilitate conversations that help us grow together in that pursuit. Now that you've heard the message for this week, don't forget to check out the Whole Life Takeaways for this message. Swipe up in today's show notes and join the conversation. Speaking of conversations, each Wednesday morning we take a closer look at the week's message. That's right, the one you just listened to. We discuss practical ways to apply spiritual lessons and ask honest questions about the issues we face as Christians all focused through the lens of grace. Your voice is a welcomed addition to that conversation. We encourage your thoughts and your questions by sending a voicemail or text to 407-965-1607 or send an email to podcast at wholelife.church. You can find everything podcast-related on our website, wholelife.church slash podcast. And plan on spending every Tuesday evening and Wednesday morning with us as we bring you the Whole Life Church inspiration you love straight into your headphones. Thanks for listening, and have a great week.